Thank you for the nice introduction and thank you for the nice music you played when I was coming up. <laughs> uh, my contribution to this theme in making innovation happen is uh, the power of asking why and value-driven behavior. My experience with uh, the power of asking why, or more precisely, the power of, uh, yeah, of asking why, goes back to when I was a little girl, or very small, and I used to ask questions to life's great and small mysterious. Today I would like to share with you a history my father used to tell me when I was little. Um, in <clears throat> Norway, as many of you know, have uh, many long fjords, and we have to take a ferry to cross them. In order to come to Stavanger, I had to cross a ferry, so I usually do this every day. These ferries dock at the ferry berth, and on any side, and to stop the traffic to rolling into the water, the berth has a barrier across the road, as you can see on this picture. Whenever a ferry arrives, the barrier lifts up to allow traffic to go into the ferry or out of the ferry first. And the ferry has a pivot on one side, you can see it on the picture here, under the Chinsavik sign, and it has a support post on the other side. One summer day, as our family was touring by car, we stopped at the ferry berth and joined the queue like all other cars waiting for the ferry to arrive. The ferry was taking its time, and I got out of the car, too restless to wait and to sit quietly. I walked over to the barrier and gave it a good look over. When the ferry arrived and the conductor came over to lift up the boom, I stood there patiently, looked at the boom, and waiting to catch his eyes. Finally, I got his attention by tugging the sleeve of his, his uh, uniform jacket. Then my father says he overheard me asking the conductor while I was pointing at that barrier, is that thing hollow? Evidently, I've been wondering why this boom could go so easily up and down when it was so long. I also had many suggestions for that answer, for answering the, that question every time I was told the story. And gradually, I learned how important it was to ask questions when it comes to open doors. Another story from my earlier career is a good example how door opens when you are asking questions. During my student days, way back, I had a part-time job as an instructor at a training center, and we were drilling offshore workers in how to tackle emergencies that might arise in the North Sea. One such emergency is to escape from a helicopter when it has crash-landed at sea. And during the exercise, the oil workers will sit in a helicopter with their seat belts. It's a simulator, it's not a real helicopter, which is gradually submerged beneath the water and turned upside down. I guess some of you have been taking this course. And the, the challenge is to release the belt, push out the window, and go out the window as quick as you can. I had been working there for a few months and was becoming tired and irritated about all the mess that the instructor left behind around the pool after the course. One day, my patience snapped, and I raced up to the boss office, flung open the door, and told him enough was enough. I was tired of all the mess equipment, old clo clothes, and other stuff. There was nobody taking responsib responsibility for cleaning and putting things back in place. Why, I asked. Why was there nobody cleaning up? Why aren't we doing something about it? My boss was a powerful figure with a big uh, bushy moustache, and he got up from behind from his desk. Standing there, more than 195 centimeters tall, he was pointing a finger at me and boomed. Go out that door and don't come back again until you have a suggestion for how to solve the problem. So I snuck out the door, closed it back behind me, while I thought, ah, how do I fix this? Well, a few moments later, I knocked on the door 
walked in, and I presented my solution. Well then, he said, that's what we will do, and you will be responsible for doing it. And at the same time, not only giving me the responsibility, he also gave me the authority to do so. So, by asking the question, a door had opened for me. This incident had a big impact on my career. To look for solutions or improvements and make suggestions for how things can be done better has become an inner drive and also has helped me shaping my leadership style. This incident took place way back in 1987, and then 20 years later, after touching base as a scientist, taking two doctorates, and also transitioning into management, strategy, and business development, I was hired as a CEO of DeepWell. DeepWell is a well service company in the oil and gas industry. We work in a very competitive landscape, and the landscape is unpredictable. We continue, continuously new, uh, meet new challenges from the competitors, like new technology, alliances, and we also have clients that have new procurement strategy that we have to understand and to adapt to. So how do we make innovation happen? Well, lo let's go back to 2009 when we were su succeeded in introducing new technology to the market. And the question is, why did we succeed? Well, we listen to our customers on their wavelength to understand what their real needs were and manage to draw a line between what is necessary and what is just bells and whistles. So listening to the customer and meeting the customer's need is what service is all about. We also <clears throat> felt very strongly that we owned the success. As a result, everybody in the company for that uh, in 2009 took the responsibility. Whatever needed to be done, whatever the job was big or small, we took part of it. And taking ownership of the whole package we deliver to our customers is our sense of ownership. We were also on the lookout for safety features in both designs and equipment and when performing the work. Within well service in our industry, safety is number one. So, when we tried to make sales to the industry, the focus on safety were the decisive, decisive factor that won us a place in the market. So, with these core values, service, sense of ownership and safety, represented with the ear, a heart and the eye, you might say that we grasp the challenge with our body and the soul. So back to 2009. What should we then do after a big contract award where we needed to increase the capacity in fivefold? A process that meant hiring hundreds of people? How could we ensure that innovation and ownership continue to play a role and be a part of us during this growth phase? Well, values are not goals, but the inner personal drive that shapes our behavior. You can say the force within becomes or shapes the behavior without. And then, how can we establish that these three core values could be an inner company drive? We had to link them to the desired behavior because the same words meant different things to the different people. Values had to be clearly defined so that they would be understood by all and could be implemented in practice. So, we based our values on what we already held and gave them a name and a description. By way of example, here are some of the desirable behavior in DeepWell 
which are generic for all the three values, service, sense of ownership, and safety, and which are linked up with innovation and inventiveness. Always ask why, if there is something you don't understand or don't see the meaning of. If you see something that is below standard or is not good enough, make suggestion for improvements. And here I have my old boss in my mind. I will never forget him. And be specific about suggestions for how we can implement or carry through this good idea in deep well. So, what is my message today? What have I learned from I was a little girl and up to now when it comes to value-driven behavior and how you're going to shape the culture in the company, the culture you would like to have? To build a desired culture, we must base ourselves on the values we cherish. Use your own personal experience to identify the values that lie lies at the heart of the company. And in an organization, values must be internally driven. And this is achieved by linking values to the desirable behavior. Without the link, without linking the values to behavior, it has little impact. Lead by example. Culture and attitude is like water, is running downwards. So to lead a company and to build culture, you must embrace the same value as the company, otherwise you will not be credible. It's not what you say, it's what you do. And a very important, Use the values actively when recruiting people to identify the individuals with the right attitude. We were looking for uh, trainees in our company some years ago. We got 500 people who were interesting to be trainees. We picked six of them. They were the winning, uh, or the winning team. M many of them had the same uh, background, experience, but we pick them out from the core values. So look for attitudes and personal values that match the company's value. And finally, reward desirable behavior. Reward people who adhere to your values and say something if the opposite is not the case. So, thank you for listening.